Howdy howdy YouTube Mental Gears here and I have sitting in my trailer my latest acquisition. This is my newest project. Uh, it is a 13 inch South Bend lathe. It's a CL145A. Uh, basically that translates to a quick change gearbox with a large spindle bore and four foot bed. And when they say four foot, they mean from the very end of the bed to the very end of the bed is four feet. That'll give me 12 to 16 inches on center. It looks to be in pretty good shape. It looks it looks really rusty, but that's just the last couple of months I've had to, to store it outside under a tarp. Not by choice, but by necessity. So I'm gonna tear the parts off and get them all cleaned up. And uh, hopefully it'll be in pretty good shape when I'm done on the back side here so my intention is to do a full CNC permanent light conversion not like my Atlas lathe where it was reversible I'm gonna go ahead and strip the parts off of this that I don't want and I'm gonna sell them on eBay so if you see something on here that you're especially interested in I'm gonna have a link to my eBay store in the description of the video and you can uh, contact me either through the eBay store or through a message in the, the YouTube listing and say, hey Jeff, I'd really like that piece there or that piece there. And uh, if I'm not going to use it, I'll rip it off and I'll sell it to you. So uh, hopefully I can sell enough stuff to fund the conversion to CNC. But in any way, it should be at least a, a fun project for the next few months to work on. But today, today is going to be me unloading it by myself from the trailer. And that is a small feat that will be aided with this cherry picker. So it makes lighter work having things in a lower trailer like this versus a pickup truck. And being the family guy with dogs, the sport utility makes a lot more sense for daily driving. Plus it's fantastic on gas and it's all wheel drive. So the, the utility trailer made perfect sense for me to go this route. Now this particular trailer has one unique component that really sold me on it, if you look down here, the pins for the hinges actually show that this gate's fully removable. So what I'm going to do is take the whole gate right off and then using the trusty cherry picker here, slide up under the trailer, we're going to pick the lathe up, drive out from under it. All right, one of the other cool things that I've used a lot over the years is this cherry picker with the legs that fold up. Now my entire shop is only 19 by 19. So on the inside dimensions from wall to wall is 19 feet by 19 feet. In that shop, I've got the Atlas lathe. I've got a small Rong Fu uh, CNC mill. I've got a full-size bridge port. I've got two tables, one of which has a, uh, a CNC router on it, an 11 by 17 bed. And I've got a new laser that I just picked up, along with all of the shelving that stores all of my materials. So all of that within a 19 by 19 area says that everything that I've got has to be somewhat flexible in the space that it takes up. So anything that I buy has to be able to fold up or somehow take up less foot space or less of a footprint when it's in storage. All right, so we get it up roughly where we need it. And then I know that the, the lathe is about, it, it can't be much more than a thousand pounds at that. So that's technically a half ton. So I'm not gonna do any further out than the one ton setting. Then I know that I've got enough 
room in there to bounce it around a little bit and not worry about bending something or, or breaking something. All right, so when I strap this, I've moved the carriage almost all the way forward. You can see it still moves, and then the tailstock almost all the way forward. Now, I placed these strategically where they're at because they create a center of gravity roughly over the chuck right at this point here. All right, so bring the trailer picker into the picture. And it's a little bit forward from where I want it to be, but as you pick it up, it'll swing back a little bit. And here are a couple of straps I should need. Now the whole lathe only weighing, uh, you know, a thousand pounds or less, maybe 1,200 pounds, I'm not really certain, but uh, each of these straps is rated at 10,000 pounds. So I don't think that there's much of an issue with risking overloading the, the straps. All right, then we can come in here Lock the tires down, the caster's done, no rolling anymore. Get in the car, pull the trailer out from under it, and then move it wherever we want. Now here is one of the trickier parts. We want to let it down slow enough because I don't have a pivot on that to spin it all the way around. Got to let it down really, really slow and try to keep it spun in an orientation that I like. So I'll bring it in where it's about six inches off the ground and you can see that the feet nest between the legs of the cherry picker pretty well. So I'll drop it down to where if it swings it'll hit the legs of the cherry picker but yet it's far enough off the ground that it's stable and with the one point of lifting like that it's it's allowed to wobble around a little bit but it's not really going to go anywhere and it's close enough to the ground that if something gave and it dropped from this point it's it's not going to be catastrophic it's just undesirable but not catastrophic. And there you go. That is how you unload something ridiculously heavy and awkward out of a utility trailer by yourself. Whew, it is 90 degrees out here. Oh. All right, so there she sits, hopefully just a week or so. But I just wanted to take a second, you know, look at this clear blue sky. How beautiful is that? Any birds chirping? Fantastic day to be outside doing stuff.